Hello. Uh, thank you again for uh, being here this afternoon. Uh, to, uh, I'm now going to speak on the, the, the very pertinent topic of COVID-19 and ARVC. So as we all have learned through the media, like COVID is primarily a pulmonary disease. Emerging data suggests that it, is also, that it also can lead to cardiac, skin, hematological, hepatic, neurologic, renal, and other complications. And the long-term sequelae of this disease are unknown. Serious COVID-19 disease is higher in those over the age of 60, those living in a nursing home or long-term facility, and those with chronic medical conditions, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic lung disease, or cancer, kidney disease, obesity, transplant recipients, and those who are immunosuppressed. Now, there recently was a nice paper put together by the University of Pennsylvania that I'd like to review with, her, with you. Uh, this paper reviewed the University of Pennsylvania experience with COVID and cardiac arrhythmias over a nine-week period. So this was in the springtime. There were 700 patients admitted to the hospital with COVID. Their average age of 50, 45% were men, and 71% were African Americans. 11% of those who were admitted required ICU level care. Now this slide shows the overall characteristics of the patients in the first column shown here. And this shows the patients in the ICU and the patients not in the ICU. And you can see if patients in the ICU, the average age was 63, whereas those not in the ICU, the age was 48. And there were many other conditions that, would, that differed in these two groups. Uh, uh, you know, for example, diabetes mellitus, was present in 44% of those in the ICU and only 25% of those not in the ICU. Cardiac arrhythmias were seen in 53 of the 700 patients or 7.5%. This included nine cardiac arrests. Now all of the cardiac arrests occurred in patients in the ICU, they were not unexpected. 25 patients had new atrial fibrillation. There were nine clinically significant bradyarrhythmia slow heart rhythms and 10 patients had non-sustained VT, a few extra beats in the lower chamber in a row. Now the uh, a total of 30 of the 700 patients died or 4%. 23% of patients admitted to the ICU died versus only 2% of those admitted not to the ICU. So clearly the, the patients that are sick enough to need ICU care are far more likely to, to die than those uh, who are not. A number of variables were evaluated to see if they predicted development of an arrhythmia. These included age, sex, race, history of heart failure, coronary disease, diabetes, mellitus, kidney disease, and ICU status. And in this study, only ICU status was associated with the development of a cardiac arrhythmia. So to summarize this study, cardiac arrhythmias are uncommon in COVID patients. Less than 5% of hospitalized patients require developed a cardiac arrhythmia. AF was the most common cardiac arrhythmia, and the best predictor of a cardiac arrhythmia was being sick enough to be in an ICU. So the question I think all of you are thinking about today is ARVC considered a high-risk group? And I'll tell you that we, the ARVD program at Johns Hopkins, don't think so. Very few ARVC patients have reported being infected. We know of several, and they've all done well. They've had mild symptoms. Uh, the potential for an increase in arrhythmias, uh, uh, you know, exists, but it really would accompany severe disease where there are electrolyte abnormalities, high adrenaline levels, uh, and so forth. Uh, but this doesn't seem to occur in ARVC patients, or at least the ones we know of. I mean, obviously, if you're a patient with severe ARVC who has heart failure, you know, and is elderly, well then, of course, you are at increased risk, but for the average ARVC patient who's generally young, not overweight, and, and not having heart failure, we don't consider this, the ARVC, to be a risk factor for a bad outcome with COVID. Is ARVC considered a high-risk group? Uh, again, as I mentioned, we're really concerned with those with very severe disease, specifically heart failure, and those that are either elderly or very obese. 
So what can you do as the ARVC community? What can all of us do? Well, as the ARVC community, if you're, you should continue to do regular doctor appointments, this isn't a reason not to see your physician. Continue to take your prescribed medications. Protect yourself by social distancing and good hand, hand hygiene. Get your flu vaccination, wear a mask, avoid large gatherings and reach out to your primary care provider should you feel sick, and particularly if you have a high fever. The treatment regimens, I think all of us hear about on the news, uh, we're, 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 we're there, there's, there's obviously a number of treatments that have been uh, shown to be effective, including steroids. Uh, another treatment is uh, remdesivir, which is one of the treatments that the president got. There's also, uh, uh, plasma from patients who've recovered from the disease. So there's, a, there's lots of research going on. And if you look at you know, how these patients are doing, I think the disease responds much better to treatment now than it did in the spring when we heard of all the huge numbers of people dying of the disease. I think we have a much better handle on how to take care of these patients. Things like prone being on a ventilator on your stomach, for example, is one of the things that is shown to be helpful in improving pulmonary function and helping patients get through this condition. Obviously, we're all really looking forward to the vaccine and we hope that uh, comes out very soon. Uh, again, treatment, there are many treatments under evaluation, antiviral agents, immune-based therapy, blood-derived products, this COVID-19 convalescent plasma, immunoglobulins, steroids, and so forth. There's some adjunct therapy that's been shown to be useful. Vitamin C can be anti-inflammatory. Vitamin D has been proposed to increase the immune response. And zinc may impair replication of the RNA virus. Again, all of these things are being studied and we don't have hard evidence at the present time. In terms of prevention, it's, this disease is most likely transmitted through respiratory droplets. Reduce the risk by covering coughs, maintaining distance, wearing a mask, and again, frequent hand washing. If you, if you have been infected about with COVID-19 or exposed with COVID-19, we wanna keep up to know what's going on with you. Please contact Krista, let her know how you're doing, how you got through it, because we're continuing to keep in touch with the ARVC community so we can share any important new information with all of you. With that, I'll stop and thank you again.